is it possible? Yeah, of course it's possible. Is it going to happen? I don't think it's going to happen. And if you go back to this time last year, we've made a series of lower highs and lower lows in the S&P. The Nasdaq, despite the fact that it's bounced over the last month-ish, is still expensive. And in this environment, I think the overall market is still expensive. And don't look past the fact that now twos tens is approaching 75 basis points inversion, probably on the way to 1%, which, again, I say it all the time, I'm not an economist, but they can't be particularly good. So the rally made sense given what we saw, I want to say, October 14th or so when the VIX topped out at 35. But Tim will tell you at a VIX of 21, the exact opposite now is true. Yeah, I'll just say this. Those top five names that make up about 40% of the NASDAQ 100, you know what they are. They're Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon and Tesla, you just gave the performance of those over the last year. Here's the thing that's really important to me. All of them just guided lower for the quarter that we are in right now, okay? So they had kind of disappointing results in Q3 and guided lower. And I guess I would say is like, we're just starting to feel the effects of these rate hikes as they move through the economy, as we know we have a weak global economy. And so to me, I just don't think it's gonna be a one quarter guide lower and we're out of this. So, you know, at the end of the day, these are the stocks that kind of led us in the bull market on the way up. Um, they're starting to lead to the downside, but I would really follow the estimate revisions until they come down enough, until valuations look reasonable enough, and until we have a good sense for what the economy is going to look in the back half of 2023. I think it's really hard to chase these stocks. They could rally a little bit more, but again, I just don't think they're going to have legs. Right now, the S&P is down 16% of the year. That does not seem to encaps encapsulate all that went wrong this past year. I, I get that you may not think that it's a one-quarter guide down, but a lot is in the stock already. And we're, we've been saying for a long time, Tim, you've been saying that you want to hear that guide down from these companies Absolutely. before we can move higher. We got it. So yeah, we, we didn't. One? I, I don't think we, I don't, the, the consumer's not dead. This is part of the problem. I mean, the consumer's got a job, the consumer's spending, the consumer's working down their, their entire savings. So in fact, savings rates, we're all following this data, are at 13 year lows. And, and so you have a case where it's really hard to see the economy fall out of bed when in fact the consumer's doing okay. I, I, first of all, I think you want to buy semiconductors with both hands, especially at Taiwan Semi, when you hear about that iPhone warning. Uh, but we haven't really gotten a, a warning, at least in terms of shipments. I, yes, we heard about some deceleration. We've heard about some uh, dynamics out of China. But, you know, to me, the, the obvious place that Dan brings up that the, the market is, we all know the market's very different, but where it's, it, it's, you have to tell a different story around interest rates. We're, we're 375 Fed funds points from where we were a year ago. And we're a place where we still haven't seen the impact of that Fed funds. That's why this market is moving in phases. And it's why we've, we've I think, been quick to point out the trading ranges on this show. Look, 4065 on the S&P, there's no reason why we don't get there. Semiconductors, which gave you a 35% move off of that CPI intraday low, are, are, are holding in there fantastically. Like, you can't, you really can't argue with the price action. But again, it's a market that's cashed up and, and sentiment's been awful. So speaking about what's been incorporated into the market, I think a lot of the bloat from loose monetary policy is what's really been baked in. And that's where we've seen this multiple compression. But as the other panelists have said, these guide lowers are really what's going to need to be priced in. And it's that E that to that PE multiple that really needs to be factored in more. And that's going to be the second segment of what likely leads us lower. And speaking of the consumer, sure, it's healthy. But we've all said, listen, what we want companies that can withstand inflation, that can raise prices, and that have strong balance sheet. Well, we are watching a consumer <laughs> that has an eroding balance sheet. Yes, wages are, are growing, but probably 2 to 3% below inflation. You have a situation where they are tapping into those savings. Oh, and you're watching credit card balances climb as interest rates are the highest they've been in since at least I can remember. I don't know, Guy. But, uh, I mean, this, is, this uh -huh. sets up for a situation <laughs> where we t we're talking about the health of the consumer. And I think that is very different than the propensity to spin. We are seeing a consumer that's willing to continue to fuel spinning with debt, but the capacity constraint will kick in at some point.